right, what's up, everybody? Happy Monday to you. So good to be back in the house on AH Live, and it is a very special episode because not only is the diva herself, Mesa, in the house, but today is her actual birthday. What an honor. Man, sometimes things just work out that way, and Mesa is such a sweetheart. You may remember we had a blast last Christmas on tour with Kirk Whalem. And so I hit her up. I said, hey, we got to do this again. We got to make some more music. So we're, we have her in the house for some incredible conversation. And of course, she's going to bless us with a song. Um, but before we do that, please help us out. We want to spread the good vibes, spread the music. Please click share. Let people know about it. And uh, we just want to keep it rolling. We're going to start with some music, though, if that's all right. Yes, we're going old school. We're taking it all the way back to my first album, Just the Beginning, with a track I wrote all the way back in 2005. It's called Any Time At All. Come on, y'all.
my goodness. I got one more before we bring the birthday girl out. One more to warm us up. It's a tune off the new record, and it's called Saturday Morning. Y'all can give me some finger snaps. Get the mood started. This is up the new album, Escape. Hope y'all enjoy it. goodness ladies and gentlemen we're just getting started just getting started with just a little bit of saturday 
morning. Oh my goodness. So, y'all know why you tuned in, right? For that incredible, unique, undisputed talent that is Mesa. But real quick, we got a little bit of housekeeping. Remember, we're gonna go to Ask Adam later on in the show, so drop your questions in the comments. My lovely wife, Kat, is standing by, monitoring all those, and uh, drop in your birthdays, your anniversaries, so we can make sure to give you all your shout outs. And if you want to be a help to the show, and I just have to say, you guys have just been so incredibly supportive over the past 20 episodes. I appreciate you. I can't say it enough. I appreciate you so much. If you want to be a help, help the show go, keep going. Um, we put it all right back into AH Live. Um, we've got the links there, PayPal, Venmo, Cash App. You can just click on those links. It helps us get our special guests, helps us keep the show going. So we appreciate you. And for the first time, we have stars enabled. I don't know if y'all have tried out the stars feature. It's so cool. You can click on the star button and uh, hit us with some stars if you dig what you're hearing. Um, so check that out as well. Brand new feature. Thank you so much, everyone out there that's been supportive. So ladies and gentlemen, it's about that time. I can't hold back any longer. She's an incredible talent, and I want to bring it to you right now. Ladies and gentlemen, please enjoy Mesa. What is up, Mesa? How are you doing? I'm good, honey. How are you doing? <laughs> oh, I'm good. I'm better now. Thanks so much for taking the time <laughs> to jump Thanks. in. We are. Okay. Thanks for having me. I tell you, it's oh. just been a wild year, huh? Well, speaking of which, I, that's what I was going to ask you first. How is everything? You know, the, the world is just turned upside down, especially for us musicians. How are you uh, hanging yeah. in with everything? Uh, you know, I think I've been concentrating on uh, my record label a lot. I'm uh, trying to pull stuff together for that in my kitchen karaoke, trying to, um, we're trying to work on how to figure out how to cook so I can cook at the same time as karaoke so I can do a little dish. And uh, so I'm investing like a headset and all that kind of stuff, trying to figure out a way to incorporate both since i'm in the kitchen anyway and i love to cook so we're going to kind of make it happen both ways so we'll see what happens man that could be cool you and i mean yeah. I, I don't want to i don't want to try to direct your show but you could even no, have, I you, want could, you, to have, you no, could have no but you could have like the recipe have people cooking it while you're doing it and right then, absolutely and that's that's i love it i love it we, we'll be doing it right along with you <laughs> i said I might, i'm doing one today um i might go one today i'm trying to decide whether i'm going to do it or not but I'm gonna do a, a like a preview of it. I'm gonna make a, a chicken ziti, Ooh. so baked chicken ziti. So instead of oh. using regular like, like ground beef, I used cut up chicken, and and it's, everybody loves it. It's the most popular dish oh, here. Oh man, <laughs> you, you're making me hungry already. <laughs> <laughs> Well, real quick, uh, I would love to just get a little backstory just for the audience. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm just, it's always fun to find out how people got started. So what mm -hmm. caused you to pick up the mic and, and uh, choose this? Uh, uh, well, when I was a little girl, very little girl, six years old, my mother took me to see um, her, the play Pearly when Melba Moore was in. And when she came out on stage and started singing and I saw the lights and the costumes and the dancing and the and the singing and the musicians and everything, I just lost it. And I was like, I want to do this for the rest of my life. And that's the first time I knew I wanted to be a singer. Mm. And I, I kind of focused on it. So all through college and uh, high school college and everything, um, I did a lot of theater, a lot of, you know, choir singing, all that kind of stuff. Uh, then in, uh, when I, the year I, I was about to graduate from, I had a year left at Morgan State University and Stevie Wonder uh, came to town and my best friend was already singing with him. And she asked him, could I audition? And I did, and I asked, I passed the audition and I asked Stevie, could I please um, finish my schooling? Because I had one year left. I wanted to give my parents my degree and then move to California. And so he said, cool, let me know when you get to California. You know, all of my friends were like, are you foolish? Like the man <laughs> said, Stevie, what are you gonna tell Stevie Wonder when you coming out to California? <laughs> like, who does that? But it worked out in the, in the best way. I was able to hand my parents my degree I moved to LA uh, February of 1991, and uh, and he was working on Jungle Fever project with Spike wow. Lee. So that was my first professional, professional, you know, gig, first big gig. And um, and so then I did that. And then while I was out there, um, I worked for a producer named Steve Harvey, a, a drummer from Scotland, and he happened to be best friends with Bluey, 
John Paul Monik from Incognito. Yeah. And and when it when Louis was looking for new singers for Incognito, uh, they had just had a big hit with uh, Always There with Jocelyn Brown. And so they were looking for a new American singer. And uh, I was at the top of the list and they called me first. And uh, and I talked to Bluey over the phone and I sang for him a little bit. And the next day his manager called me and said, come on out Mason, we're gonna fly you to London. And uh, you got the gig. And so the, about wow. three weeks later, I flew to London and I lived there for four and a half years. And while we recorded uh, Tribe Vibes and Scribes and Positivity and went on world tours and all that kind of stuff. So that was great. And then the next, the next magical moment was when we were on tour in uh, the North Sea Jazz Festival. After the show, a man came up to me and uh, he said, Hi Mason, my name is Carl Griffin from GRP Records in the United States and want to know, are you ready for your solo career? And I was like, okay, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, sure, you know. I was a little scared, but it was real. I went to New York, had meetings, and, and I signed with GRP that day. And, uh, and I put out my first solo album that came out in August of 1995. Yeah. And this year, this August 29th, this month, we celebrate 25 years as a solo artist. So it's real cool. <laughs> and you now have your own label, right? Yeah, yeah, Blue Velvet Soul Records. Um, I've released uh, two singles so far, You Are Not Alone and um, It's Gonna Be All Right. And yeah. on August 21st, uh, this year, I'm gonna release my latest single called Loving You Is Easy. Wow, fantastic. Yeah. And, and, and this single, uh, I'm going to go back a second. It's going to be all right. Uh, I guess no one good was available because we've got Chris Davis, <laughs> yeah. Bill Perry, and Kim Waters. I mean, God, right. you know, you just, know. you know, you're stacking the deck. I love it. Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah, this song is really popular. It's done very well and um, really, really grateful for that. Uh, you know, it's always a uh, special work with my brothers in the industry, you know, uh, I've been very blessed to work with great people in the music industry, you know, and that's when we was on a tour with uh, Kirk Whalen and stuff. We had a good time, the Christmas tour and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We had a, so y'all treated me like a princess and I, not, I really appreciate that. Yeah, and you beat me to it. I was going to bring that up. Well, we we first connected on the Dave Cos cruise earlier yeah. that year, which was incredible. I think that was the, was that the Australian cruise? Yeah, Australian tour. Yeah, yeah. That was so fun. It oh my was God. so fun. And you just <laughs> killed it every <laughs> night. And you know what I always think of is your rendition of uh, Love is a Battlefield. Man, it's, oh, thank you, it's honey. <laughs> so hard to do a cover because you, you want to honor the original, but then mm -hmm. you also want to do your own thing. And... Man, you really did that. And that's the title track for that album as well, right? Yeah, it is the title track to my, my last album. I'm working on a number, that's the, my 13th album, and I'm working on number 14 right now. Uh, I'm actually doing two things. I'm doing an EP called mm -hmm. Music For Your Soul, and then the, other, the, album, the full album, I haven't titled it yet, so it'll be out next year. But um, the EP should be out by the end of this year, I hope so. Very cool. Yeah, and then that Christmas tour was such a joy. You know, Kirk is... Oh. Kirk is the best, and then yeah. himself, and then John Stoddard, and then his yeah. brother Kevin, and it, man, yeah. it was just uh, yeah, it was a good time. Man, it was it was really incredible. I th yeah, we packed a bunch of shows in like two weeks. You yeah, know? no, isn't that crazy? It was so fun. The audiences were great. Everything yeah. just ran like you know clockwork. It was really sweet. We had a good time. Yeah, gospel according to jazz Christmas. We got it. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> got to get it all in there. No, it okay. was great. It was great. But um, but yeah. So uh, let let people know. Uh, you mentioned your your uh, kitchen karaoke, but uh, when does that air typically? Um, kitchen karaoke airs on Sunday nights at seven thirty p.m. on Facebook Live. Okay. Um, and you know this is my fourth year doing it. Uh, it's amazing how um, it's just. I mean, I welcome everybody. I know it's a new a new normal for everybody now. Uh, yeah. Uh, that we have to, but we do these things from home. I really miss being on the road, though. It's just so devastating that that we can't go to work. I'm like so used to going to work, and you know, I drove past the airport up there, and I was like, I want to go in the airport. I want to go somewhere. <laughs> it was so weird. But kitchen karaoke, yes, there I have. Um, and uh, uh, some nights on a random nights at midnight, I do a midnight serenade. Okay. Also. Yeah. So. And that's all on your uh, on your Facebook page, right? Yeah, on my official like page, yep. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> well, real quick, before we get out of here, let us know where we can find you online. Obviously, we've got your Facebook page, but your website, mm -hmm. uh, where else? Yeah. Um, Mesa.com is my website. 
M-A-Y-S-A.com. You can find all of my links to all my social media there and find all my discography and stuff about my history and all of that stuff on, on that page. Awesome, awesome. <laughs> Mesa, really Thank appreciate you, honey. You taking the time to come through. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, you know, it's always a joy to connect with you. So appreciate you. <laughs> Thank you, sweetheart. Take it easy. All right.
Mesa, love is a battlefield. And as I mentioned, it's not an easy thing to do a cover like that. I mean, gosh, but she really made it her own. And uh, I had the honor of playing that song with her on the cruise and on Kirk's uh, Christmas tour. So it was so great to hear her sing it one more time. Thank you, Mesa. And ladies and gentlemen, please support Mesa. As she mentioned, she has her own label now, new music coming out, couple singles, and the EP and the album coming out soon. So make sure you support our girl, Mesa. Thank you, Mesa, for coming through. Well, it's from one diva to another. I gotta bring you know who on. That's right, it's time for the cat cam. There Hi. it is. What's up, Kat? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? So how about Mesa? Is there room for two divas on this show? Of course. <laughs> <laughs> uh, wasn't she incredible, though? Yes. Happy birthday, Happy my birthday. Leo. That's right. You're both Leo. We just yes. had your... And we're going to get to that, too. We got some pictures from your birthday. Oh, yeah. That's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yours was not that long ago on mm -hmm. the 7th. So yeah, two Leos. Uh, there's, there's a, well, yeah. and then Nick Leone's birthday. Um, That's right. The 19th. And he's coming on next week. So hey, it's birthday month. Right. <laughs> <laughs> what are the people saying about Mesa out there? Oh my goodness. Well, first of all, everyone was saying happy birthday to Mesa. Okay. And, they, and then a lot of people too said they, they loved her blue nail polish. Oh. So people are loving your nails, Miss Mesa. And someone I saw said that they loved your black hat with the rhinestones on it. That you were wearing when you were singing and then of course of course everyone was loving the song someone said her voice is like butter yep. a bunch of people were like sing mesa yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it was great and then of course everyone loved the interview people really really enjoy hearing the artists and how they first got uh involved in music what inspired them so they really enjoyed her story and you know what's wild is that she had a sim somewhat similar path to Denise Williams. I mean, in, in the fact that they both started with Stevie Wonder. Isn't yeah. that wild? Yeah. They both started singing with Stevie and then both became icons. So that's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. And she even told Stevie to wait. She said, <laughs> she said that's cool. That's cool that you want me to come sing, but uh, give me a year and then right. I'll come out. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> hey, you got to do what you got to do. So yes. she finished school, then went out and joined Stevie and then mm -hmm. Incognito. And then obviously the solo career 25 years and counting so yeah. um really incredible it's amazing yeah yeah so it's an honor to have her on here what a talent i know and so many people um that we know friends like steve hall steve hall's watching hi steve what's up steve he says sounds great adam thank you steve steve mastered everything you're hearing all of my <laughs> records and uh, everything that i almost everything that i produce so appreciate you steve if you need mastering future disc hit them up yes and when you were asking people to please share, yeah. Kathy McGrath says she shared with three jazz groups and about oh, 30 friends and family. Awesome. Appreciate you. Thank you, you hey, so much, Kathy. We, we appreciate the support out there. You guys have been amazing. And we just want to spread the good vibes. There's so much craziness going on in the world, but this is such a community here every Monday night. So we appreciate you guys. And, uh, we're just having fun with it. We're going to keep it rolling. Yes. And we have some people shouting out from where they're watching from. Okay. Donnie Moten says, greetings from El Paso. All right, Texas. Down in Texas, Chuck Trend. He's watching from Hummelstown, Pennsylvania. Okay. And he says he celebrated his 72nd birthday. Oh. And he loves your AH Live show. Wow. Okay. All right. Yes. Well, happy birthday. Another birthday <laughs> in the house. Diane Otley Johnson. She says, Adam, you did such a wonderful job with Rick Ron over the weekend. Thank you. Oh, that was so much fun. Rick's Cafe and Rick, man. <laughs> It's like, you know, the, the quarantine happened mid-March, and it was like Rick's Cafe was on the next day. Mm -hmm. It was so I crazy, know. and so it was a big honor. 
I've known Rick a long time, and so I was thrilled to be the uh, you know featured artist this last Saturday. If you didn't have a chance to see it, just go on YouTube, Rick's Cafe. It's the most recent episode. And it was so much fun. I hadn't played with humans. I know. Since March 1st, literally. And so it was so fun to play. Um, you know, uh, we played a bunch of my tunes. And then um, we did his new single, Crossroads. Mm -hmm. And then we did um, a song that originally featured Jeff Golub, who we, we sadly lost a few years back. And so that was an honor to do Philadelphia and pay homage to Jeff. So um, appreciate Rick, man. Thanks for having me. And Rick will be on the show. That was part of the deal. I said, I'll come on Rick's Cafe, I guess. <laughs> but you got to come on AH Live. So, ladies and gentlemen, look for Rick um, in the in the coming months. He's coming on. Awesome. Yeah. Let's see. Uh, Ellen Nakata Harper. Yeah. She says, the production is amazing. Such great camera angles. Oh, thank you, Ellen. Appreciate you. You know, trying to, trying to bring you all the guitar cam. Mm -hmm. <laughs> when you were playing uh, Saturday morning, mm -hmm. James Johnson says, this is one of my favorite songs. Oh, thank you. A lot of people were saying that. That is a nice song. And it does sound like a Saturday morning. Yeah. Well, you know what the thing about that song, you know, and, and the hardest thing is, is, is coming up with titles for instruments songs but that just sounded like Saturday morning to me and um, that's one of the cool things about this show is I've been able to play so many more songs than I do in my live show because you only can do so many songs and you kind of got to play the hits you know I'm mm -hmm. fortunate to have had you know some some songs do well so a lot of those kind of um, album cuts like Saturday morning and anytime at all I, I never play them so uh, that's what's been fun about this show is to dig into the uh, into the catalog if you will right <laughs> When uh, you were doing your interview with Mesa, yeah, Peter and Joy Nichols, they're tuning in from Austin, and they said that they were tuning in with their Adam Holly Escape t-shirts on. And they sent me a picture earlier today, <laughs> and uh, oh man, you guys look sharp. That's right. Hey. I was going to say, put a photo in the um, yeah. comments so we can Drop see that you. photo so in that. It's such a cool photo, and, uh, <laughs> and hey, I... You know, I wasn't going to bring it up, but since you guys did, you can get the t-shirts <laughs> at adamholly.com. Here, I'm going to throw that up real quick. Bam! adamholly.com slash shop. You can get your t-shirts, CDs, and the new album also in vinyl. So, uh, thank you guys for that commercial. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cute. Diane Barnes, she just wrote um, in response to you playing at Rick's Cafe. Yeah. She says it was strange but wonderful seeing the whole band in one place. Right, yeah. Well, yeah, because everything's <laughs> been virtual. And then, of course, I had um, the two two weeks of, of concerts uh, with Lindsay here, but we had recorded all those in separate places. So, yeah, to all be in one room was... It's odd that that, that, that that is different, but it is because, you know, we've all been isolated. So it was, it was pretty fun. Was pretty and I fun. could totally tell when I was watching that you were having a good time. Yeah, I enjoyed myself and I lost about five pounds of sweat because... <laughs> Because <laughs> uh, as much fun as I have on Monday nights here, uh, you know, we, we were up jumping around, running around. And uh, and, and I uh, was praying every second that he didn't catch the Rona. <laughs> so. Well, we were very safe all throughout Soundcheck and throughout the, the whole day with our masks. But, you know, Except for the show. Except when you were filming. Well, for the show, you know, you can try to, you know, try you to leave it all out there. You can still wear a mask. Okay. She, she's trying to scold me on live, Facebook Live. So. I'm scolding everybody. <laughs> okay. All right. <laughs> well, hey, actually, this is a great segue because um, speaking of quarantining and everything that's going on, our son just started middle school, sixth grade. Mm -hmm. And, honey, you did an amazing job making a workspace for him. I want to throw these pictures up and <laughs> um, because we're all, uh, you know, we're all um, – adjusting yeah. to the new normal to 2020 and so we're so proud of our son adam jr and so i just want to throw up a couple of these and just show you what y'all what all we've been up to so um so you adam's gonna show you i think a oh, here photo we go. of what it used to look like that was my office space yes so this is what it looked like before and it looked very nice you had a very nice office space Thank i you. have to say but um there was a little bit of a transformation <laughs> that happened bam Look at that. He's got his maps up. Yes. He's got his periodic table. He has his own laptop now. Here, I'll show you the other side of his workspace. So yes. our, 
We our, had our to little, um, our little boy is growing up. <laughs> make a little uh, like a fort for him because yeah. that space is normally open. It's yep. just right off of the kitchen, and I didn't want him to be distracted because in the spring, I think everyone was just trying to like scramble together. So we just had him at the yeah. kitchen table, and I was like, he definitely can use some type of barrier, and yeah. so we wanted him to, you know, just be focused, be in um, an educational. Yeah. environment like a little bubble so i put those dividers up and then i had to put curtains on the other side of it so his zoom class couldn't see through the, <laughs> the yep. cracks and be distracted as well so we kind of just had to like throw it together but he loves it every time he he finishes a class and he does they do like an hour of independent study like every couple of hours and once he gets done, he'll say, I'm going back in the hole. <laughs> <laughs> and also, we have our own exercise routine. Uh, you know, he's got um, PE class, but also we have him sign up for Taekwondo. And we start every morning with a walk with you know who. Yes, Rufus. <laughs> Rufus has his harness his, and the, his leash. And so we go for a walk every morning. And Rufus is a terror. He's trying to take, take out all the dogs. And you can see there, uh, Adam Jr. is getting pretty tall. He's catching I up to know. you. Oh, my goodness. He, he he's, caught he's, up to yeah, me. Yeah, <laughs> he, he's about to catch you. He's about to catch you. And real quick, um, before we get to Ask Adam, I got a couple pictures I want to share from um, your birthday. Mm -hmm. Since it's a it's a, a whole bunch of birthdays yes, this month. Birthday and also, month. by the way, happy birthday to Everett Harp. And happy birthday to Nicholas Cole. I believe they both have birthdays uh, this month as well. So... Um, it's birthday month. So, uh, you know, I try to do a little something, something for my honey. <laughs> so I went and got some flowers. I went and got a little Prosecco. Yes. A little sparkling water. Set the table. I did th this all myself. Well, Adam helped a little bit. Yeah. Well, Adam helped a little bit. Here's some decorating. A little Adam helped with. And the big item, and, and if you follow me on Facebook, you saw this. I got a, a wood fire oven so that we could make Napoli style pizza. Mm -hmm. And we wore that thing out. <laughs> We made about eight pizzas over two days, and uh, you can see there, there's the wood fire, and there is the final result. Oh my goodness, so tasty. Yeah. I haven't eaten that much pizza in my life. <laughs> and uh, so we had a really, really fun birthday I celebration. I think we eaten that much pizza. I felt like I, it was my birthday. I, I, I distinctly <laughs> remember when we were in Italy at some point. I mm -hmm. think we were in Sicily. Well, yeah, when you're in Italy. And when in Rome. And we did like a, <laughs> a pizza tour. Yeah. And I think we went to three or four different places and yeah. had different pizza. I felt like I was going to throw up by the end. Hey. <laughs> But you, we had to eat it. You got to do what you got to do. in Rome. So, uh, <laughs> but yeah, well, I hope you had a, a happy birthday, honey. I did. I enjoyed your birthday. So, <laughs> <laughs> so what are you going to do? Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for Ask Adam. What are the people Ask asking Adam. out there? What are the questions? I'm so proud of everyone sending in your uh, questions early because <laughs> usually I'm trying to scramble and scroll, you know, right at the last minute. So great job. Okay, so Nancy Stack, she says, are you teaching virtually? I am. In fact, I did double duty today. Well, triple duty. I, I was working on production <laughs> all day, but then I had my class down in, uh, it's at Saddleback College in Orange County, and, um, and it's all virtual. So we had our first lecture today. And uh, so today was auditions, auditioning all the new students, all via Zoom. And then next week we'll start start the lecture. And uh, it's a full semester, 16 weeks. And uh, obviously doing an ensemble is tricky virtually, but um, we had to do it for half of last semester. So uh, we got our feet wet and um, and have a good you know have a good time. Uh, you know, just helping them with their artistic and musical journeys. So, um, so yeah, I'll be doing my uh, class and also uh, private lessons all via Zoom through Saddleback College. And it's so cute. I have to say, I enjoy uh, listening to you talk because Adam is kind of a loud talker, you guys. And so I can wow. hear him down the hall, you know, talking to your students. And Adam is so patient and so inspiring. And his students are always so comfortable with him. And so it's just nice to kind of witness because I don't get to see, you know, obviously when you're at school, <laughs> other than sometimes if I drop in on a master class or something. But she, she's dropped in a few times when I didn't know she was <laughs> and she'd sit in the back and pretend to be a student. I was like, oh, my gosh, she messing with me. That happened one time <laughs> one because time, we were right. going to go eat after. All right. One he time. Like, he's over here telling stories. Mm -hmm. One okay, time. Okay. So LaRonda Garrett says, who cooks more, you or Kat? 
You mm. know what? Up until a month ago, it was 100% cat, but I I have to give myself a pat on the back. I've been uh, doing breakfast almost every day for the last month and, and a lot of lunches, too. But when it comes to the heavy lifting, it's my <laughs> lovely wife, Kat. You're talking about the entrees, the... Um, you know the specials if you will she just throws down so um thank you but i was yeah. I, we have a good a, a good team effort going with the pizza oven because i mm-hmm. you know i get it going and then you have to main the, maintain the temperature it's got to be at 750 fahrenheit um for the ideal cook on those pizzas so it you know it's it's kind of a thing you got to sit there and put the wood in and whatnot and um, yeah and you were uh you know kneading the dough and then i was cooking them and then bringing them out and then yeah. they slice them up and so uh we're, it was a team effort on the pizza team effort <laughs> and i must say i'm very proud as well because we've been married 12 years yeah so for 12 years up until like adam said a month ago he has never cooked a meal ever and that's just because he doesn't know how to cook look at him look at him <laughs> Oh, uh, it's true. It's true. What are you going to do? So what are you going to do? But you know day, what happened? The day that you brought me breakfast, I was on the phone. Yeah. It actually was when my mom was in the hospital. And I was on the phone with one of her friends giving updates. And he brought this plate. And it was an arugula salad, something else I can't even remember. And I was staring at it like, you made this? <laughs> and I told my mom's friend, I said, pigs must be flying somewhere. Oh, you're stupid. Do you know I what never- it was, though? <laughs> I, I, I love breakfast. I love eggs, omelets, scrambled eggs, and Cat doesn't like eggs, so I never get any eggs. And, you know, we haven't been going out to eat that much, so it, it occurred to me one day, I haven't had eggs in five months. So I went to the store, got some eggs, got some turkey bacon, and I just started, I just figured it out. And uh, it's, 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 yeah, I, I think I'm getting the hang of it. At least the breakfast. <laughs> okay, James Johnson says, are you guys coming to Phoenix later in the year? Well, gosh, I would love to. I don't know if any shows are going to happen this year, to be honest. Um, and I love coming to Phoenix. There's a great promoter there that's been bringing me there um, for the last several years, um, Kevin Marsh. And so I hope to be back there. But, gosh, I don't know. Um, hopefully soon. Hopefully soon. But I, I'm, I've got my fingers crossed that 2021 will be a, a resurgence. And so uh, let's just all keep our fingers crossed for that. <laughs> Mike Brown. Hi, Mike and Crystal. Is Crystal awake this time? Because yeah. last week she was asleep. <laughs> if so, hi. <laughs> um, he says, have you ever come up with a song in your sleep and woken up and just continued to write? Funny you mention that. There's a song <laughs> on my first album, <laughs> Just the Beginning, and it's a song called While You Were Dreaming. So you can kind of gather uh, that song was one that I dreamt. And you know that feeling when you dream and then you wake up and you're like, what was I just dreaming? Mm-hmm. It was so wild. When I woke up, I, I remembered everything. The melody, the drums, the chords. And so I went immediately to my studio, which fortunately is just the next room over, and wrote the whole song and, and recorded the demo in about an hour. And that's how the song was. That, that was just the finished product. And so that um, ended up featuring Michael Linkton. And uh, it's definitely a special song to me because I actually remembered my dream. (laughs) (laughs) And that is so amazing. That's one of, well, all your songs are great and your first album was amazing. But I think that song for me was one of my favorites because it's just so amazing. Like you said, like you wake up and you're like, I had a dream, but I can't remember. And you had told, and I heard you playing the song in the room and I was like oh he must be writing that for someone else because I had never heard it before and he said oh I just wrote this new song and I said what song and he said this song but it was completely finished (laughs) and I said but how when have you been working on it and he's like I just dreamt it and I woke up and everything he heard the melody every instrument which is just incredible so I like that song (laughs) <laughs> oh, thank you. Thank you. Well, and honey, we got time for one, for one more. One more. Lori Erickson. Mm-hmm. She says she wishes Saddleback College, which you teach yeah. at, which you just said, would bring back any type of radio station like they did with KSBR, which was such a great jazz station, and she loved it. Yeah, we miss KSBR, although they're still doing jazz, if I'm not mistaken, on the HD2 um, frequency if you have an HD uh, radio that you can switch um, but yeah they were so supportive for so long and um, Vienna down there and, and all of the people they were really great and then Blake Aaron who was a guest on this show um, a couple months back he used to have his own show there so yeah we miss KSBR so much really awesome 
awesome show. We do appreciate them. They're still um, spinning my music on the HD2 setting and appreciate that. But, um, but yeah, it's a great station, mm-hmm. KSBR. Yeah. I know. And they had that great festival, too, KSBR Bash. Yeah. Which was so cool. So, um, hey, fingers crossed they can bring it back. <laughs> so um, We just had Billy Mondragon <laughs> pop in. He hey, says, hey guys. what's up, Billy? Hi, DW3. Billy. Make sure you check them out. They've been uh, doing a live stream as well. So, uh, fantastic, fantastic group. So, uh, what's up, Billy? <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to let you get ready. I finally was able to... Uh, bend her arm and get her to sing today <laughs> so i'm going to do a few announcements let you get ready get your tea and whatnot yes. and then we'll come back to you um ladies and gentlemen next week we have the incredible nick coleon and it's another birthday it's his birthday this this month and so we are going to celebrate him and we've got some music some great conversation and um he's just just such a uh, great personality and dear friend of mine and somebody I really appreciate. He's been so supportive of me from the beginning. Um, I I kind of half thought, being the new guy, that especially other guitarists would be kind of like have a you know, not a rivalry obviously because they're legendary, but you know would be kind of like competitive. But man, Nick Colleone, um, uh Norman Brown, George Benson, all of them have just been super. Earl Clue, they've just been so supportive and just like man, love seeing you doing doing your thing. So um, anyways. Dear friend of mine, Nick Colleone, in the house next week, so don't miss it. And for the rest of the month, and what a month it's been. We had a double header of Lindsey Webster with full band. What a blast. Mesa today, Nick Colleone next week, and we finish up with one more double header. The fantastic, incredible bassist, Daryl Williams, who was nice enough to play on those Lindsey Webster videos. He had a smash hit a few years ago and um, several other really big singles on the radio that you've enjoyed over the years. So he's going to come in and play for us. And a fantastic new talent, Gino Rosaria, who um, I produced two songs for him and mixed his current album, which is a fantastic album. He lives down in um, Pensacola, but he's from Curacao and also is nice enough to play on um, a lot of my shows down in Florida. So um, so we're going to have a lot of fun this month. And in September... Oh, I've got some big surprises for you guys. I, I, you're going to have to just tune in. I've got big... Well, you, I already let the cat out of the bag. Rick Braun is going to be coming through, but I've got some other big ones too. So definitely look for that. And uh, what do you think, honey? Are you ready to, uh, to go diva on us? Sure. <laughs> so this is the song we've only performed one time. And it, and it was just so much fun that... Um, I was like, let me bend her arm and uh, <laughs> and get her to bring this song back. <laughs> it really needs no introduction. You're going to recognize it. Walk in your rainbow
Thank you for blessing us tonight. I think that's like the longest I've gone without singing. We can't do that again. I'm (laughs) I'm putting you on the spot. I'm putting you on the spot tonight. (laughs) We need another song (laughs) next week. Right, ladies and gentlemen? Drop that in the comments. Let her know. I feel like Mesa because (laughs) we're usually gone somewhere all the time. If not every week, every two weeks, every three weeks, but then still even at home we're singing. And so just not singing at all. It's been weird. But I've been busy, you guys. I've been busy. Yeah, it's it's been it's been pretty wild. So, but thank you so much, honey. You're welcome. Appreciate thank you for you. having me. Of course, Dr. Holly. Of course. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been an awesome episode. If you want to help out the show, just a quick reminder: don't want to beat you over the head, but we appreciate the support. PayPal, Venmo, Cash App, um, and uh, we put it all right back into the show. And you can also donate through Stars. So um, appreciate you guys. I've got one final tune. Before we get out of here, and it's a tune off of my second album. Featured a good buddy of mine by the name of Darren Ron. This was the fourth single off of Double Vision. And it was called Shuffle. Come on, y'all. Put it right here. Here we go.
now, ladies and gentlemen, that concludes another episode of AH Live. This was episode 20 featuring the unbelievable, the diva herself, Mesa. Do me a favor, wish her happy birthday one more time. Support her, go to her website, grab her records. We appreciate her for coming through. Happy birthday, Mesa. And ladies and gentlemen, don't forget to tune in next week for Nick Coleone, episode 21, right here on Adam Holly Artist Page. We'll see y'all next week. Peace. <laughs>